The Kentucky Wildcats have had a larger portion of the NFL draft in recent years than they have for decades. We got Kevin McGuffey on the line from Last Word on College Football to break down the Cats uh, and the NFL draft, of course, coming up on April 23rd. Kevin, how you doing? I'm doing great, Mark. Thanks for, for having me on again. As always, I really appreciate it. Um, you know, great to get on and talk, talk some football since, you know, we don't know it's kind of a nice de- departure from the real world stuff to get here and talk, talk about football. Absolutely. And as people hopefully check out your, your Twitter page, maybe I should be referring to you as a count or Iron Man or Washington <laughs> or cube or shug. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's the, identities. Yeah. That's the, um, yeah. At Kevin McGovey. It's, um, the, there's a daily, a half hour daily show that we produce here. I work at a TV station in Lexington, Kentucky, and uh, called Hey Kentucky. And uh, I've kind of be, made a, um, I don't know how you want to describe it, but uh, basically they were like, uh, Hey, you want to dress up like all these weird people and, you know, play characters on TV? And like, <laughs> okay, sure. So we've done like George Washington, we've done um, Ice Cube. That was, that was kind of fun one day. Um, you know, just things like that. But yeah, it's, um, you know, it, it's been fun. The show's been fun, you know, for a couple of years, it's undergone some changes. I we'll have to get into all that right now, but, um, you know, for things, but yeah, it, it's, it, it's fun. It, it's always, if I told you that this, this late in life that I'd be, uh, it was going to be on a TV show, you know, once or twice a month or even more, I, I would have told you you were crazy. But, uh, then again, I wouldn't expect to be, you know, on this, you know, awesome you know shows with you talking about football either so it's funny how things work out sometimes it is funny the way things work out and i'm thinking already the the wheels are spinning that if we don't have a 2020 college football season you may single-handedly keep my channel running by coming on here in character (laughs) and and keep us going well i was gonna say we have a um there's a uh, um a a seventh or eighth grader that does an incredible John Gruden impersonation. Um, we've had him on a couple of times doing like, you know, basically like the whole John Gruden film room thing. And um, he, it was absolutely hilarious, but yeah, sure. I can, I can pretend to do buddy, be, be anybody you want me to. So that is tremendous. That is tremendous. All right. Well, talk about a character on the national scene of college football, Lynn Bowden and his versatile skill set uh, certainly, uh, stole the show of bowl season in particular. And one of the last times we had you on was following that uh, just epic uh, role that he played in uh, that Belk Bowl that went down to the wire with a touchdown pass from him and all the rushing yards from the quarterback position. And if you're unfamiliar, folks, uh, Lynn Bowden, one of the uh, dynamic playmakers in the SEC, was forced into a situation where he had to play quarterback for about the final eight or nine games of the previous season and ended up, uh, would have set rushing records uh, had he played the entire season, just came up short of the quarterback rushing record in the SEC and just did an outstanding job. Now he turns in from from SEC wide receiver to SEC quarterback, and now what's he going to be in the NFL? Well, you would think wide receiver, but certainly um, if, if anybody needs an emergency quarterback, uh, that's just an extra added bonus, I guess. Yeah, a- absolutely. As you said, um, we were talking before, uh, he's one of the more interesting, I think, um, you know, players in this draft because no one knows, you know, everybody wants to talk, you know, I think, hey, he could fit in, in this role, this role, this role. You know, I've seen a lot of people uh, compare him to Taysom Hill from, um, you know, from the Saints. And now Bowden himself says he, he likes to compare himself to Debo Samuel which, you know, former, another former SEC guy. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I think he's going to be drafted as a wide receiver, but more than likely he's going to do – he'll, he'll you know, catch passes, obviously, um, maybe run some wildcat. And he said he wants to do special teams because, you know, he, he was a star, you know, kick and punt returner for Kentucky – before all of this, you know, craziness, you know, happened last year, as you said, the injuries to Terry Wilson, the injuries to Sawyer Smith. And it's like, okay, well, what, what are the coaching staff going to do? It's like, Hey, we've got this guy here. He played quarterback in high school. Let's try him out and see what happens. And as you said, he was, I think maybe 10 yards short. I think it was Cam Newton's. I believe it was Cam Newton's record for most yards by a quarterback. And um, yeah, like I said, if you look at the the latest mock drafts, the one I was looking at yesterday, uh, CBS Sports has him going in the third round um, to possibly, I think, New England. I've seen, you know, and 
you know, why not? You know, Bill Belichick system, of course, now who's going to be who's going to be throwing the ball to him? It might be a different question. Maybe he'll just, you know, line up in the Wildcat and do it himself. Um, but I've seen New England. I've seen uh, Buffalo. I've also seen one I saw this morning um, mentioned Baltimore, which is kind of which would be kind of interesting because there's a lot of people that want to compare him to Lamar Jackson. Obviously, the running the running ability, you know, maybe about the same, obviously the passing, you know, Bowden didn't do that well, but if you look at his stats, once he got into this, he started, um, you know, completing a lot of passes, but he didn't have to because he was running for two, three, 400 yards every game. You know, he ran for over a hundred in every game that he, um, he played quarterback except for the, the Georgia game and he ran for 99 and, you know, running against that, that defense for 99 yards is nothing to, Nothing to scoff at, but um, like I said, he's probably the one of the most intriguing, intriguing players. I think probably third round, third round pick is is pretty safe. Um, I've seen a couple of things that even have him moving up in late second round, but um, but as I said, third, I, I think third round for him, and I think whoever's getting him is going to get, you know, is going to get a heck of a player and, and somebody who I think is going to be playing, you know, on Sundays for for many years to come. And we have to be kind when we look at his passing statistics, considering, hey, you know, this is an athlete. This is a kick returner, wide receiver, a guy that's the jack of all trades. But now we're extending the jack of all trades to the nth degree and we're throwing him an SEC offense and having to run an SEC offense against that league's defense uh, just out of nowhere. So that that's exactly. a tough call. And he certainly uh, filled the bill. And yeah, it was just an interesting thing to watch all season with Lynn Bowden and uh, man with him going to the Patriots as a uh, one, one team as a speculation that that would not surprise me uh, Bill Belichick just seeing a guy that oh yeah I I, mm-hmm. I know man I would love to see what I could do with this guy uh, and certainly uh, a number of NFL teams will be intrigued to to get him in the mix and see mm-hmm. what he can do you know we've got from a recruiting standpoint Kevin of course that that uh, category athlete where somebody doesn't necessarily have a position, that's almost Lynn Bowden's position going into the NFL draft. Yeah, I, I 100%, because as you said, he can play, can line up at quarterback, line up at running back, wide receiver, um, you know, and then, you know, kick and punt returns, basically everything except maybe play defense. And he probably could do, um, he probably could do that too. So, well, speaking of the Patriots, I know that they took uh, kick returner and wide receiver Troy Brown about 15 years ago in a run to the Super Bowl. All of a sudden, they were short on defensive backs, and they threw him over there and just let him start covering someone. So I wouldn't put it past uh, Belichick uh, what he could do with Lynn Bowden. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, less of an intriguing prospect in regards to all the possibilities, but certainly a very solid one as I look at the uh, the guard and center position. Uh, for the prospects is uh, Logan Stenberg uh, is rating very highly on those boards. Yeah, uh, exactly. He um, part of that big blue wall, as they like to call it with, with the offensive line with him, Landon Young, uh, Drake Jackson, all those guys, um, you know, he probably graded out higher than just about anyone on the Kentucky offensive line last year. And uh, as I said, another guy, he's looking probably third, third round, um, you know, it just depends on what, you know, it just depends on what teams. And of course this, this NFL draft is going to be one of the more intriguing, you know, I think somebody, somebody said that um, it's, it's like a, a higher stakes version of like your fantasy football draft, you know, basically with, you know, basically everyone sitting in their living rooms and making and making picks. But now, as you said, the St- Stenberg, I think is absolutely, um, I think he'd be a good solid player. Whoever takes him, um, he's, he was has if there's one drawback, he has a tendency for penalties. Um, that drove Kentucky fans crazy last year because you know I don't know how many big plays, how many things got called back because of holding a holding penalty on on Logan Stenberg. But you know, but when he was when he was good, and, and he's good most ninety nine percent of the time is just you know get the holding penalties or you know a couple unsportsmanlike conduct penalties. But you know, it, sometimes coaches don't mind players being that aggressive, but um, but as I said, talking about with, with Bowden, um, a third round pick seems to be pretty safe. Um, Green Bay is one name I've seen, one team I've seen out there. Uh, Pittsburgh um, as well. Of course, Pittsburgh has had you know good success with Kentucky Kentucky players recently. You think about you know Bud Dupree, and then you think about Benny Snell last year. You know he w- he would be a good fit with them. And also, I've seen Baltimore as um, 
a, a possible landing spot for Stenberg as well. And as I said, it's just, you know, who, who knows that this, like I said, this draft, it just depends on who comes up and what their needs are at the time. But, um, you know, last year, Kentucky, Kentucky broke a streak. They'd gone, I think, two or three years without having anybody drafted Then had five drafted last year. And, you know, they're going to have two for sure drafted this year. And then, you know, next year's class, I think, you know, I think, you know, the years to come, you're, you're going to see Kentucky, Kentucky consistently, um, you know, getting two, three, four or five, maybe, you know, guys drafted in every draft going forward. Yeah, you mentioned that uh, this NFL draft is going to be unlike any other for the obvious reasons of the pandemic and the way the NFL draft is going to be constructed, both from a TV show standpoint and just the the structure and the operation of and the logistics of just the teams uh, working the NFL draft. And there's been all sorts of talk about uh, when there's needing to be a trade and how that's going to work and, and all sorts of communication uh, challenges that they're working through. But also from the standpoint of player evaluation, you touched upon it, is that as I talk to more and more people, the basic thought is that uh, instead of these workout warriors taking over the NFL draft because the teams have been so enamored with the NFL combine and this guy can bench press this and he can run this and look at the him and the shuttles that they're 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 having less opportunity there were very few pro days right. uh, for these players and they're relying on the tape they're relying on uh, what did these kids actually do on the field and, and that seems a pretty basic <laughs> let's get back yeah. to what what these kids actually can do on the football field yeah you're exactly right because you know Kentucky Kentucky was one of those pro days that got canceled you know we were you know this this past weekend would have been the spring football game but that didn't you know obviously is not is not happening and uh, but as you said, now it's just, you know, people, you just got to watch, watch the tape and, you know, you just never know what somebody out there will see something, you know, something in the player that they like, you know, and that's basically all you have to go on this year is what the, you know, what, what the video say. And as you said, Bowden has, you know, a highlight reel for days that you could watch. And then like I said, Stenberg, Stenberg, you know, is, 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 is much the same. He's, you know, you know, Benny Snell wouldn't have broke. Benny Snell wouldn't have broke the all-time, you know, record at Kentucky without, you know, Stenberg, you know, making the holes for him. And, you know, Bowden wouldn't have got 15, almost 1,500 yards last year, you know, without Stenberg. Wait, you know, and if you watch those videos, you'll see, you know, there's a couple of really good players that somebody that's that's going to be going to be on some, you know, get drafted to somebody's team. And like I said, they're going to be players, I think, for years in the NFL. Now, in terms of the current Kentucky edition, um, Certainly the fans have not been able to see what we would have seen during spring practice. And the highlight of all highlights would have been the competition between Terry Wilson and Joey Gatewood. Mm -hmm. uh, you got to think that that favors Wilson. Let's say, let's say we come close to having some kind of standard football season. They get to camp in August or September. And uh, obviously Joey Gatewood not in the system for a spring practice. Uh, I was intrigued to see how this was going to play out because I, I would talk to one person who just assumed Joey Gatewood was a hotshot prospect at Auburn that he was going to take over the job. And, but obviously Terry Wilson led this team to 10 wins and a top 10 finish. Right. Yeah. And that, that would have been really interesting because um, Wilson was not going to take part in um, spring practice this year, you know, he's still recovering from that torn patellar tendon. So it was going to be, you know, Gatewood. And then you have um, Amani Gilmore, who's, you know, highly recruited quarterback from Louisiana from a couple years ago. And then Bo Allen, who's um, a Lexington Catholic local, local product who um, is, you know, probably one of those guys was going to be, you know, the man, and of course we can't forget Sawyer Smith um, <clears throat> who himself, you know, battled back from injuries last year. You know, and going if there had been a spring football, Smith probably would have been your 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 number one, and then Gatewood would have been right there, and then Bo Allen and and Gilmore. You know, Kentucky has a really um, a wealth of, of of quarterbacks right now, and um, you know, like five, four or five guys, and that's not including Nick Scalzo, who's another highly recruited guy from Florida, who um, who tore his ACL, he's torn his ACL twice, and um, is trying to get back out there on the. Uh, out there on the field, but yeah, it would have been, it would have been a lot of fun watching Gatewood running, say the blue team and then watching Sawyer Smith running the white team. But, um, you know, unfortunately the, you know, things didn't work out like that this year. So. All right, Kevin McGuffey, last word on college football, please check out his work and everybody else over there 
uh, at last word because they have helped me out considerably for years and years and years. So, Kevin, we always appreciate you stopping by. Hopefully, we'll have some good news concerning, well, certainly the the overall situation in the country is much more important. But uh, as it pertains to college football, hopefully we'll be having things to talk about on the field here in the next few months. Yeah, I hope so, because it's it's getting difficult to um, try to come up with the topics to uh, to talk about it last word. So, I, you know, I'm working on um, last week. I did one about just looking at Kentucky's early recruiting class for next year. They've got four guys signed already. And then we're doing a um, I did um, working on one right now, looking at the coachings, coaching changes, because, you know, obviously changes every year. Um, you know, they've had a couple guys leave and a couple guys come in. And then, like, for next week, kind of going along with this, I'm going to do an NFL an NFL draft preview. And then, um, you know, as you said, there's not a whole lot to, you know, you, you can – we obviously start, you know, talking about the season and, you know, going position by position. But, you know, like I said, hopefully, fingers crossed, this whole thing will will play itself out. And come September, we'll have, uh, we'll have football. And everyone will be happy and life will be great. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Kevin. If if we can get to that point, boy, that would be tremendous. Well, yeah. stay safe, stay healthy. I appreciate uh, you stopping by. Oh, thank thank you for having me. And same to you, Mark. Hope everything is is going well with you. You guys staying staying safe and staying staying healthy.